for example, you know, uh, we are dealing with, uh, you know, one kid, he's 15 years old, he throws the ball at 90 miles an hour, you know. Él está hablando de un muchacho que puede aventar la pelota 90 millas por hora. Now we live in Wisconsin and the, the scientists are over here that, you know, the cows, they give you the same amount of milk even it's minus 30 degrees or it's 130 degrees, you know. It's, it's not possible without that, you know, uh, you know, bringing in that, you know, people with that kind of expertise. Uh, las vacas te dan la misma leche si está 30 centígrados de temperatura o si la temperatura es diferente. That was not a test. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, things like that, you know, the reason the milk is so cheap because of that, because of the immigrants that came in. La razón por qué la leche está muy barata es porque los, inmigran los inmigrantes que han llegado a este lugar. And then personally I can talk about it, we bring them from overseas, they came over here. Los traemos de fuera de, de este, um, del país. And they bought the house, they're buying cars and all that, you know, stayed over here. Ellos están comprando casas, están comprando carros, están permaneciendo aquí. And their company then sent this person out to Middle East and Europe and charged them money for sending this person over there and then that, you know, that money comes back to United States. Y luego este... The company in United States, okay. because now they brought these you know, people with expertise over here, so United States is sending them out and then bringing all that, you know. La compañía de los Estados Unidos cobra por mandar a esas personas así como a sus países de origen y porque traen personas con experiencia ya que pueden contribuir algo. So, you know, um, so economically it benefits everybody, even though, you know, Senator may say, or, you know, a kid in the school may say, oh, it doesn't affect me. No, the reason you are drinking milk, it's so cheap, you know, you know, your parents cost you less and nutritious is because there are people with expertise who we brought them over here so you can have the best top nutritious milk. Económicamente es un beneficio para el país, como hay personas que vienen aquí y es un, este, una contribución. So there are a lot of examples right here in our community too. We don't even have to go outside or anywhere, you know. Hay muchos ejemplos aquí en nuestra comunidad. Ni siquiera tenemos que salir afuera de nuestra comunidad. And like I was talking about the baseball, you know, uh, that kid, he's right here in uh, Wisconsin. Not even you would think he will may maybe in Florida. No, they're in Wisconsin. Él dice que el niño que puede aventar la pelota rápido está aquí en Wisconsin. So if we can talk to them about that, you know, and, and like I said, you know, when I speak, they, they don't realize that then they're like, oh, yeah, that is true, so. Uh, what was it? Oh, letting them know from the daily life, our examples just around us, we don't even have to go far-fetched, you know, uh, uh, that how immigrants affect everybody in the positive. Eh, los inmigrantes afectan a todos los miembros de la comunidad positivamente y ni siquiera tenemos que ir muy lejos para, para ver esos este, cambios. And I'll tell you that, you know, for example, this kid who is a baseball player right now, the person who is the coach up here, they were immigrants. That means, you know, they came to United States and, and they were not legal. And um, I started, I think their application was 2000. I made them permanent resident, then citizen, and look what they are doing now. You know, now they got bringing these baseball kids with that kind of quality. El entrenador del muchacho de ese niño que seguimos hablando, él también fue un inmigrante ilegal, pero ahora ya hizo su proceso de aplicación y ahora es legal y él está dando el ejemplo de cómo ha entrenado a este niño. So that's an example, immigrants helping continue positive, you know, in es, the positive. Es un ejemplo de cómo los inmigrantes están ayudando positivamente. And, uh, you know, I was uh, talking to them and I said, you know, how come, you know, you are still in Wisconsin, you don't want to move from here because now you got baseball kids, you know, and they were like, no, we have been here so long, you know, <laughs> 20 plus years, we just, you know, would like to stay in Wisconsin. El habla de como muchos emigrantes ya han estado en este país por ya muchos años y ya no se quieren mover, ya se quieren permanecer aquí. So there are a lot of positive contributions, it's just that we just need to look, you know. Hay muchas contribuciones positivas que los inmigrantes traen, nomás tenemos que mirarlas. And we can see that, you know, in the universities, you know, immigrants going to school and all that, you know, trying to make a difference in their life and the community at large, you know, so. Uh, podemos ver esta diferencia en los, este, en los colegios y las universidades, como hay inmigrantes que están estudiando para hacer un beneficio al país o a sus comunidades. 
So just like anything, you know, we see somebody give them a hand, you know. So same thing, immigration law is there, you know. Yes, if we can do something positive, why not? It helps everybody out. Uh, estamos uh, hablando de cómo si la inmigración puede ayudar a alguien positivamente, eh, ahí está, está para ustedes. So, from your personal experience, do you think that the application process for visas and green cards is more complicated than it has to be? Could it be simplified or anything that would still like meet the expectations of Homeland Defense and the other agencies? Ella pregunta que si el proceso para aplicar para una visa es más difícil de lo que en realidad tiene que ser. The immigration law, as I was talking about it, that you know, it goes back in time and there is a lot of things if you came here legal or how you arrived in the United States. Las leyes de inmigración observan mucho eh, y se basan eh, yendo el tiempo atrás y mirando cómo llegaste a este país. So, for example, you are a permanent resident, you have a criminal conviction in your background that makes you deportable. Por ejemplo, si eres un residente permanente pero tienes algún crimen que esté en tu récord, eso te puede este, perjudicar y eh, ponerte en deportación. The way the law is, if you are in, in United States and ICE gets involved with you, si estás en los Estados Unidos y ICE se, este, involucra contigo, it's totally different section of the, the, the law that will apply to you compared to if you are coming back in the country and I saw you at that time. Es diferente si estás aquí y ICE te ve aquí en el país que si estás regresando del país y ICE te, mi te mira so en el... So you can see immigration law treats you different if you were coming in the country or you were in the country. Las leyes te tratan diferente si estás en el país o si vas a regresar al país. So when you file the applications, that's why you got to make sure that everything has to be correct because like I was speaking earlier, you may file travel document, yet you leaving country, coming back, CBP looking at it and say, hey, you don't qualify. So you got to make sure that everything is correct. Por eso tienes que asegurarte de que toda la información esté correcta, porque las diferentes agencias se fijan en diferentes cosas. And immigration law says that if we make a mistake, that doesn't mean that it's right. If we approved it, it and it was a mistake, that doesn't make make it right. So if we see it, we made a mistake, we can revoke it at that time when you are coming back in the country. Y si estás aplicando y regresaste afuera del país y ahora que vas a regresar y se dieron cuenta que hay un error, ellos pueden revocar ese error. So that's why it's a little bit complex. Por eso, por eso es un poco complicado. Um, other than the right to vote, would you say that legal citizenship has uh, advantages or like certain privileges over permanent residence, or is that like a f reasonable end goal for immigrants? Like el, okay. el pregunta que si la residencia per permanente o, uh, o la ciudadanía permanente tiene beneficios sobre la residencia permanente. Earlier I talked about if you qualify for benefit, might as well get it. And one of the things was if you qualify for citizenship, yes, get it out of the way, become a U.S. citizen. Si calificas por un beneficio, es mejor que lo apliques y aplicas. Si puedes aplicar por la ciudadanía, sí, es mejor que tú apliques para ser ciudadano. Because once you become U United citizen, then you have the, all the rights, just like a person who born in United States. Si apl aplicas para ser ciudadano y aceptan tu aplicación de, y eres ciudadano, tienes todos los derechos que una persona que ha nacido en este país. But if you are only a permanent resident and they change the law, yes, then you cannot do anything about it. You may be removed if they change the law to that, you know, or permanent resident, their children born, they may not be a citizen, they can do anything, you know, anything is possible. But when you are a citizen, that's it, then you are a citizen. Si eres un residente permanente y cambian la ley y te reportan y eso es eso, pero por eso es mejor que apliquen para ser ciudadanos y tengan, obtengan la ciudadanía. So also when you become a U.S. citizen, you can file for your brother and sister. If you are a permanent resident, you cannot do that, you know. So today, your, you know, your brother and sister might say, oh, I don't want to do it. But guess what? I have seen that when their children grow up, they're like, now I want to go to the United States because they want to go to college. So suddenly, so it's a better idea if brother, he became a citizen, just file it because it's going to be 15 years anyway. By that time, things may change. El ser ciudadano de los Estados Unidos tiene sus ventajas, como por ejemplo, puedes aplicar para que uno de tus uh, hermanos, hermanas, hijos puedan obtener la residencia. 
hope I answered it. I was just going to add that in addition to if you become a citizen, you also, um, in addition to voting, you also qualify for Social Security and Medicare and other benefits. Exactly. Hay otros beneficios que la aplicar para ser ciudadano trae como el seguro social, el, el Medicare. And also for the tax purposes too. So, you know, so where clients have passed away as a citizen or permanent resident, so you got to be, so if you're a citizen, it's better. También en términos de taxas es mejor ser ciudadano. Thank you. Um, in your experience, uh, you said that every immigrant has a right to due process. In your experience, do they get the same quality of due process as they do in other courts like family court and criminal court and etc.? Ella pregunta que si es la misma calidad de servicio que obtienes al aplicar por inmigración como si estuvieras aplicando por servicios de familia o algún otro servicio. Right, they get the same rights like that, but from one place to another place, from person to person, it's totally different. Pero tiene los mismos derechos, pero de lugar en lugar cambia y de persona en persona es diferente. And I have seen that, you know, if ICE is, you know, calling out somebody's name, you know, sometimes they're respectful. Sometimes you think that you may be, you know, in a different country. So it all depends on that person. Yeah. Cuando ICE está llamando la el nombre de una persona, una persona puede pensar que es respetuoso. Cuando otras personas pueden pensar que es respetuoso, depende de, de dónde vengas. Some judges are very nice, have patience, and some do not have any patience at all. So... Unos jueces son muy este, buenos, otros tienen mucha paciencia y otros, en lo contrario, no tienen nada de paciencia. Just like anything, we see different, you know, um, uh, d treated differently from different places. And not only court, we see that with the officers also, you know, they are different, you know, and some are nice, some are, you know. <laughs> Eso yeah. depende de la persona, como hay personas que son buenas, como en términos de oficiales, hay oficiales que son buenos, hay, hay otros que no tienen mucho respeto. And especially now we saw with the detention and what's going on, so big influx at the borders, yeah, what's going on, yeah. So, and some of them are private companies too, you know, now besides the court we were talking about it, we are being held and all that, you know. So those are private companies that are, you know, uh, 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 they are staying in there, so it's kind of a jail up there, so they are treated differently. Sí, hay uh, uh, compañías privadas en, el, uh, en la frontera que te tratan diferente. Um, could you maybe list some of the ways that a person could become a citizen? Ella pregunta que si puede hacer una lista de las maneras que una persona se puede hacer uh, ciudadano. You mean like a permanent resident, legal? That's what you mean? So, when you talk about citizen, we are talking about you have to be a permanent resident first, then become citizen. So you are already a permanent resident. No. Para ser ciudadano tienes que ser este The question I'm talking about. Oh. Can you go through both processes? Sure. So when you come to United States, you know, the first thing would be a visa and then permanent resident. That's the first step, permanent resident. Cuando vienes a los Estados Unidos, el primer proceso es tener tu visa y después obtener tu residencia permanente. So once you are a permanent resident for three or five years, then you can file for your citizenship. Después de que has sido un eh, residente permanente por tres o cinco años, eh, después puedes aplicar para tu ciudadanía permanente. And then it, uh, there is a condition also that there is no crimes committed, especially in last five years, you know, when you filed, counting exactly five years before that. Y después hay condiciones como, por ejemplo, el si no has cometido un crimen en los últimos cinco años. So now permanent residence, if you're talking about that, somebody can file it today. Yeah, as long as there was an application filed on their behalf before April 30th, 2001, then their employer can file a green card application for that. Uh, puedes aplicar para ser ciudadano si aplicaste para ser residente antes del uh, abril 30 de 2001. And at the end, when they will be getting the green card, you know, uh, the only thing would be, even though they came without a visa, they will pay a thousand dollar fine and they can get the permanent residence. Uh, puedes pagar, si tienes tu green card, puedes pagar una, una multa de mil dólares para obtener tu residencia permanente. And these are the steps you have to go through. Y estos son los pasos que tienes que hacer. So, when when we talk to a client, this is what we are looking for, and we have some clients that did file earlier, but then it didn't go anywhere, and they thought, oh, there is nothing I can do. But then when they came to us, we said, no, you still 
have, you still qualify under the old law, you have been grandfathered. So your employer still today can file the green card application for you. Hay clientes que se preguntan por qué no ha pasado nada con su aplicación, pero porque aplicaron antes de esa fecha, sí se puede hacer algo por ellos. Or if you are a victim of a crime, and a lot of people don't know that, if you are a victim of a crime, yes, you can then file to be legal as well. Si eres víctima de un crimen, también puedes aplicar para ser uh, residente permanente. So there are a couple of things that still can be done, you know, based on your facts, your background. Hay diferentes cosas que se pueden hacer dependiendo de tu uh, historial. In cases where someone marries a U.S. citizen, how is it different? En el caso de que alguien se case con un ciudadano americano, que, right. ¿cómo es diferente? As long as you came legal, you marry a U.S. citizen, the process takes maybe three to four months. El proceso dura de tres a cuatro meses si viniste a este país legalmente. But if you came without a visa, that's when the issue comes in, and that could be about, you know, uh, year and a half, year to year and a half. Y si viniste a este país sin una visa, eso es cuando el problema viene y puede tomar más de un año. And compared to the other, when you came legal, here you have to show a hardship on your U.S. citizen spouse or parents, you know, so you have to show a hardship. Y si uh, hard. you came here legally? Yeah, if you came here legally. Y si viniste aquí legalmente, tienes que comprobar de, uh, como documentos que estás casado con esta persona legal aquí. Unless you have the attorney and you can, you qualify for DACA, then you go outside the country on DACA, come back, and then file the green card application. So you go out for a week, come back, and then file your green card application four months. Y si no tienes tu visa, puedes salir del país por una semana, aplicar, y regresar, y después hacer otra vez la aplicación. So, hope answered your question. <laughs> Now, we didn't talk about some other visas are there too, like a J visa. Sometimes it has a, um, a condition on it, you have to go back to your country for two years and then uh, you can come back. Even though you are married to a US citizen, you have to go. That can be waived, but only in certain conditions it can be waived. Hay otros tipos de visas, como una visa la J, que tienes que regresar a tu país por dos años, después de dos años volver a regresar. So when we were saying why the applications are not, uh, why they are complicated, when, we t when you were saying that's why, because it's a whole bunch of things going on at the same time. Es por eso que el proceso de obtener una visa es muy complicado, porque hay muchas cosas que están pasando al mismo tiempo. Now, there's a visa waiver program too. We were talking about people coming in legally. Under visa waiver program, certain countries, for example, Great Britain, if you're a citizen from there, you can just show up at the airport and they will give you nine, 90 day entry, just like that, you know. But with that, if you marry a U.S. citizen and want to file it, there's an issue with that, even though you have a legal entry, but with that, you know, there's an issue. Uh, también depende de dónde vengas. Por ejemplo, si vienes de Inglaterra, puedes aplicar por una visa y obtenerla en alrededor de 90 días. So immigration law, it's keep getting complicated and complicated. Las leyes de inmigración se han puesto más complicadas y más complicadas. But that's why we are here for, you know, the immigration law is just to, okay. This is what we're going to do. Pero por eso el abogado está aquí. Anybody else? Hope it was informative, not too much information, not too little information. Let's say thank you to Sardar Durrani. Thank you. I appreciate it. And, and I think Benji deserves a round of applause, too. Yeah.